friends, and welcome back to Flourish. Last week, we had a delightful conversation with Ann Graham Lotz and Rachel Ruth Lotz Wright about how we want to pass our faith on to the next generation, how we want to ignite their faith in Jesus. Well, today we're going to take that a little further, the next generation further, actually, and we're going to talk about, well, how do we teach our children to walk with Jesus, to love him when the world is getting darker and darker? It seems as if each generation faces something that the previous generation didn't. So how do we teach our children to walk with Jesus, to pass that baton of faith on to the next generation and the next generation? For all of us long to have a family tree where everyone in it knows and loves Jesus and that we'll spend eternity together in heaven. In fact, I remember my mom used to pray before she moved to heaven with Jesus. She used to pray, Lord, don't let there be one missing link in our family line. And that is our prayer for each of you in Iran today, that as you come to faith in Jesus, that your children will come to know Jesus as Savior and your grandchildren, and then your great-grandchildren all the way on until Christ's return. So let's talk about that today. How do we pass on that baton of faith when the world around us is getting darker and darker? I have some wonderful guests with us today. We have Ann Graham Lotz is back with us and her daughter, Rachel Ruth Lotz Wright, and then Rachel Ruth's daughter, Riggan. And so we've got three generations of Christ followers right here. What a perfect example of um, passing our faith on. So welcome, friends. Thank, Thank you. you. It's God's grace, Joanne. Yeah. Mm. You know, we do the best we can, but all of us make mistakes and we don't do it perfectly, but God... God's grace is wonderful Amen. And for every generation. Yeah. Exactly yes. right. Mm -hmm. So you, these names may ring a bell to you just to give everyone an update or, or to fill you in if you weren't with us last time. Anne is Billy Graham's daughter. And so she has this legacy. So how far back would you say Christ followers are in your family line, Anne? <laughs> I, you know, I don't want to go too far back because I think um, there were some pretty uh, salty characters in my uh, father's side of the family. My mother's side of the family, uh, they were fairly strong. Mm. So, uh, but at least it goes back to my parents and my grandparents That's and beautiful. my great grandparents. But then you get a little bit beyond that and we won't go there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but even Jesus had some salty characters yeah, in his right. family tree, didn't that's he? Right, yeah. But I love that. So you come from a generation of believers. And yes, then, yes. Anne, you've got your beautiful daughter, mm -hmm. three kids. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Rachel Ruth is here. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, and she asked Jesus in her heart when she was a little girl. And, um, and it was just sweet because sometimes you think a, a child, a, a real young child, can't understand enough, but they can. Mm -hmm. And yes. um, and then Ray Truth led Riggin to faith in mm -hmm. Jesus and, and Rachel, she was little too and she, yeah. she was young. All my kids received Christ when they were almost three. Mm -hmm. So very young, but in their minds, they could understand. They knew that they did bad things and they knew they needed uh, some Jesus to save them. And, and I explained all that to them. And so, and, and they've walked with the Lord. So. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Wow. And then Regan, you're here. Tell our friends, how old are you? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm so honored to be here. And I'm I'm 15 years old. Um, my name is Regan. And I'm in ninth, in ninth grade. And I'm just, mm. I mean, this is just so neat that we get to come and talk about Jesus together. And um, I just think about um, talking about Jesus with my friends at school or with sports. Um, I play basketball and lacrosse and I also play soccer, but mm. this year I decided to play lacrosse. So just sharing the gospel anywhere um, with your teammates, with your classmates, just um, the opportunities we get are just really unbelievable. Mm. So. Amen. I love that. Well, you know, we are so excited to have all three of these beautiful women with us, but especially Riggan, mm -hmm. because I know we have listeners out there that perhaps you're a teenager and you're wondering, how do I live for Jesus in Iran, um, in Afghanistan, in the place that you live that is such a dark world? Well, Riggan is a great example to you. You can see she's put together physically, and yet she loves Jesus. Yes. And the, the sweet thing about Riggan, we'll talk about that a little bit more this afternoon, but she is not ashamed of the gospel mm -hmm. of Christ. She carries a holy boldness with her faith. So our first question, um, each one of us have grown up in a different generation when we were teenagers. And you were a teenager in the 60s. Right. Mm -hmm. Rachel Ruth, you were a teenager in the 90s. Mm -hmm. I was a teenager in the 70s. 
and then you, Regan, are a teenager now in the yeah. 20s. Mm -hmm. But each generation carries um, a different type of darkness, doesn't it? Yes. What were some of the things that each one of you have battled as you were a teenager, and how did you overcome that? I don't remember battling it, but in my generation, mm -hmm. that was the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. So in the United States, there was rioting in the streets, there was a shooting on a university campus, there were, um, mm. you know, uh, during the uh, presidential election, when they were trying to decide who the candidate would be, there were dogs turned loose on the people that were ah. protesting. And so it was a very unsettled time. There was a lot of division in the country. Um, but but to be honest, Joanne, uh, whatever is going on doesn't change the truth. Mm, amen. So, so God's word is the same. And that foundation of faith in God, if you plant your faith in God's word, the, the stuff that goes on around you doesn't affect that so much. It, it can challenge you, but I think it should make your faith stronger Amen. because God's word doesn't change. Amen. You know? So it's um, the scripture says of itself, it's forever settled in heaven. Mm -hmm. Jesus said not one jot or tittle. That means not a little punctuation mark, a comma, a period. None of that would disappear until all is fulfilled. Amen. So, so the important thing, I think, whatever the generation is, we put our roots of faith down in God's Word. Amen. Yes. And that is the crux of this right there. God is unchanging. That's His right. Word is unchanging. Right. Circumstances are. Right. The Bible tells us that the world is in the hand of the evil one. Yeah. 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 But as a follower of Christ, we stand on His truth. That's a beautiful answer. Thank you for that perspective, Anne. How about you, Rachel Ruth? How did you do battling or struggling with yeah. or wrestling with facing the darkness in your generation? I think growing up, when being a teenager in the 90s, um, I saw a lot of my friends still would go to church, but it was mm -hmm. here in America, they would go to church, but but it didn't play out in the rest of their lives. They In their, in their weeks and going to school, you couldn't tell. I was like, did you even hear anything, you know, about the Lord when you went and, and they weren't walking with the Lord. And so that's where I shared last time how I was just left out so mm -hmm. much because Jesus changed everything in my life. It was the way I lived and thought and spoke and the things that I did. And I know alcohol was a huge thing when I was growing up. Kids were drinking and getting into all kinds of mess because of that. And that's something that we've never had in our home. And mm -hmm. I don't have in our home and my kids don't. And so it's just, uh, I think I saw a lot of that, but it's totally changed now with this generation coming up, at least the generation I grew up in, they knew about God and they knew who mm -hmm. Jesus was, but I think it's very different now. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, good, good. How about you, Regan? Yeah. What are some of the pitfalls in your generation? Yeah, I really think like the biggest, um, the biggest way the enemy tries to get into these kids is um, through social media. Mm -hmm. And they didn't really have that, like y'all didn't really have that in, um, in your teenage mm -hmm. years, but. I mean, the, the things you can see on social media, thing, like the things you can say, the thing, I mean, it just, the possibilities are really endless and it's really sad. And um, kids get hurt, they see bad things, they do bad things, you know. And I just really think that's the biggest way the enemy uses that. And um, I, I just... I mean, you stand yeah. strong. Yeah. yeah, you do. Yeah. You do okay, so one of the things that I heard about you, Regan, that your mom shared, I think actually maybe even in the, the book that you read, wrote together, um, you know, Christ followers, yeah. teaching your kids how to walk with Jesus, passing your faith on, is that at lunchtime, you go to a school that's not a Christian school, so keep that in mind, your children, I know you go to a public school perhaps where Islam is all around you, taught in the classroom. But Regan, tell us what you do at lunchtime before you eat your lunch. Yeah, so um, I really think it's always been important to me to pray before I eat and um, to have boldness doing so, you know, so it doesn't matter if you're in a restaurant or mm -hmm. um, at the lunch table or just at home, you know, I always think it's so important to pray and um, to bless the food, you know, and so I always pray before I eat at the lunch table and I get weird looks. I mean, mm -hmm. I've had when I when I look up from praying, I'll have girls like looking at me, pointing at me, laughing, you know, mm -hmm. but I'm like, I, I sit there and I think to myself, what have they ever done to me? I mean, what have they ever done for me, actually? And it's like, why would I betray the God I've served my whole mm -hmm. life and that he's loved me and I've loved him? Why would I let their opinions matter to me, you know? And so I just I just really use that as um, my my rock, you know, and, and praying, it gives you boldness. So it, and it can open up conversations at mm -hmm. lunch, you know, with other girls. Mm -hmm. When they give me those funny looks, I'm, I can, 
open up a conversation about the gospel, you know, and just having that boldness and especially in our generation is just so important. It's so mm-hmm. key. And, and other girls will see that when you're timid and kind of shy about it and they're mm-hmm. just like, oh, well, then that, that concept must not really matter to, like to them. Mm-hmm. But having boldness is just so important. Mm-hmm. And um, I've, I've had some great conversations with the girls mm-hmm. at lunch and especially That's with great. the situations today. Yeah. I mean, it's just, mm-hmm. It is, it's really neat what um, one prayer, even though it's something small, what it can do mm-hmm. to just branch out. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying about the holy boldness this young girl yeah. has? <laughs> so we want to encourage you, friends. Um, I know you live in a different culture than we do, but something as simple as bowing your head mm-hmm. in prayer can open up a conversation to share Jesus with someone. And you can even do that at home with your children. That can open up a conversation with them if you know Jesus and you're trying to share that with him. Well, we know one of the most important things in passing on our faith is prayer. I love the verse in Lamentation that says, Arise, cry in the night as the night watches begin. Pour out your heart like water in the presence of the Lord. Lift up your hands to Him for the lives of your children. Beautiful verse. And that's from Lamentations 2.19 that will be on the bottom of your screen. A great verse um, to remember and to pray as moms as we intercede for our children. But very practically, Anne and Rachel Ruth, how have you prayed for your children? Remember, mm-hmm. we're talking to many men and women, and they really don't know how to pray for their kids. Mm-hmm. So could you give us some practical tips on how you have done that? You know, one of my um, core prayers for my children when they were growing up, and actually for my grandchildren too, was that when they read their Bibles, they would learn how to listen to mm-hmm. the voice of God, that, that this book is living. So although the words that are printed on a page, uh, it's God's word, and He speaks through mm-hmm. His word. So um, you know you can read a passage, and then a verse just seems to leap up off the page. It, it's um, like it quickens; it comes to mm-hmm. life. And often that's God speaking to me. And so I wanted to, my prayer for my children and for my grandchildren was that you know as soon as they could read, they would learn how to read their Bibles and hear God speaking. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a beautiful passage in the Old Testament from 1 Samuel when Hannah wanted a child. And um, she prayed she was barren. She didn't have any children and she prayed. And uh, God answered her prayer, gave her a child. She said, if if you give me a child, I'll I'll give him back to you. Um, So she had Samuel, a little boy, and uh, then she nursed him. So I don't know how long she nursed him, maybe three years, five years. But then when she had weaned him, she took him up to the temple and placed him there. And he, that the, priest in the temple was a very wicked man, uh, and his sons were very wicked. And uh, But she left him there, giving her son to the Lord. Mm-hmm. And um, and then one night, he heard his name called, and he got up, he thought the priest was calling him, and the priest said, no, it's not me. He heard his name called again, he ran to the priest. The third time, the priest said, go back, the Lord is speaking to you. Mm-hmm. And he went back, and it was God speaking to Samuel. And from that moment forward, Samuel, it says he became um, a prophet of God and none of his words fell to the ground. Everybody knew that when Mm -hmm. Samuel spoke, it was God speaking through him because God's word had become alive in his life. And but he needed that old priest who was um, a wicked man in himself. But he he taught Samuel to listen to the voice of Mm God. And so I wanted my children to um, learn how to listen. And I'll be honest, Joanne, I have a three children. I have a son and then two daughters. My son, all of his growing up years, he um, I taught him, but he didn't mm-hmm. learn. Mm-hmm. So he's made a lot of mistakes, um, life, life decisions that have just um, really put him in a wrong direction. He's come back in the last mm-hmm. three or four years and just become a real man of God. And mm-hmm. I'm God. so thankful that God mm-hmm. has redeemed him. But but, uh, and he'd received Christ young, but he wouldn't listen to the voice of God as he read his Bible. And, and he does now. I can tell you he does now. And, um, and I'm so Praise thankful. And, but my girls had tender hearts. And so they have done that mm-hmm. as long as I can remember my mm-hmm. girls reading their Bibles. And I know Riggin does that. Mm-hmm. And she's faithful. In fact, I'd, I'd love to, I don't know if this fits in at this moment, yes, but please. share how you do your devotions because yeah. she's so faithful reading her Bible and listening for the voice of God every day. And that's been my prayer for my mm-hmm. children Beautiful. and for uh, Regan and her sisters um, since they were born. Mm-hmm. Because once yeah. once you hear the voice of God, once you read your Bible and you can hear him speak, I feel like that relationship is sort of cemented. Yeah. Samuel Absolutely. never turned back. Samuel 
lived for the Lord all of his life, he was did. a great man of God because he knew God personally mm -hmm. through his word. So Regan, tell us a little yeah. bit about your way you read your Bible. Yeah, and it's it's it really is so important to me because it's starting your day off right, you know, and you want to give the Lord your first fruits and your last, you know, and mm -hmm. so I love to do my devotions in the morning and in the evenings. So um, I wake up and I do the three questions, um, which is a method my grandmother uses, <laughs> and um, and it's basically just breaking apart verses. I usually use three verses, and I'm going through Luke, and I'm in Luke chapter 4 right now, but um, just getting up and having that time with the Lord, I feel like it's so special because throughout the day, you'll see how much that scripture yeah. relates to you, and it, it really is an encouragement because um, the Lord just so speaks to you through mm -hmm. through that, you know, and it, it's, um, you're just feeling the Lord's care, you know, mm -hmm. and so um, I love to, throughout the day, you know, if I have more free time, I like to make time for the Lord, but um, I'll try and get in my Bible as much as possible, and so, um, and like last night, I was reading through Genesis, and I'm trying to um, highlight and mark through, you know, and I have like a a Bible study Bible and then one that I just read and so I love um, taking mm -hmm. notes in my Bible and highlighting and then in the night times I read um, a Psalms and a, a chapter of Psalms and a chapter of Proverbs and they really just sum up my day and it really is crazy how the Lord does that mm -hmm. and it just yeah. it's like the perfect like the ribbon on the present, you know, it's like the perfect, Aww. the perfect ending to my day. And even if the day was terrible, even if it was good, even if it was just kind of, eh, it just, it really sums up my day. And it's just how the neat, I mean, it, it is neat how the Lord just so cares about that, you know? Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah. I love that you start and end your day with yeah. God's Word. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Okay, so real quickly, what are those three questions? I know everybody's wanting to know yeah. what questions you ask when you read those yeah. verses. Yeah, Um. so... It's you start with the facts, so you take um, the, I use three verses, so you take the facts, which is not adding anything, um, it's just taking away, kind of getting the main point out of the verse, but you don't add any words to it. And then the lessons, um, you just take the main lesson from the fact that you got, and um, that is really where I just, where I get um, that encouragement throughout the day, you know, is just the facts, and then um, at the end you take out the questions. So you ask yourself, um, just questions about the lessons, reflecting on them. And um, it's just, it really is neat how it just all ties together. Mm. That's beautiful. We will have that at the end um, where you can go deeper. We'll have those three questions listed for you so you can study your Bible yeah. the way these three women do. Okay, a question for you now, Rachel yes. Ruth. Yeah. Um, how, with your three daughters, have you been able to keep your lines of communication open? Because we know that communicating with our children, yeah. no matter what they're walking through, good times, bad times, if they're walking with the Lord or if they're struggling in their walk with God, yeah. keeping that line of communication yeah. is open. How have you been able to do that? That's This is actually huge to me because since they were little, I, I, that was a goal of mine. I wanted to make sure that we always communicated. And so we would sit down at night and I would talk with them. And, and usually it seems like they talk the most at night. And so, <laughs> so we always end up staying up really late. And I just sit there and, and I want to give them all the time that they need to pour their hearts out, tell me who was mean to them today and who wasn't. And, and we just go through their day. And I, and I think it's important that our kids know that we give them our time mm -hmm. and that we want to hear what they have to say, that it's important to us. And the thing that hurts is when you feel like a parent or somebody that you love doesn't care. Mm -hmm. And so we need to show our kids that we care about them. We care about what they're saying, what, what they're going through. And so we sit and discuss things and talk to them. And, and, uh, and I found, I will say with my oldest that is going through a hard time right now, just not making good choices. Um, and she'll, she'll say things or get angry with me. And I have to be so careful just to, just to listen, not to react, to love her no matter what. And I think to be very wow. loving, no matter what your kids are telling you or how they're yelling at you or what they've confessed to you, to just always remember the way that a lot of times the way that they look at us is the way they view the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so we need to make sure that that we respond in a way that is very, very Christ-like. And it is hard because sometimes yeah, yeah, you're just yeah. wanting to lay them out, you know, and <laughs> and tell them, ah, I can't believe you did that. But but I think it's important just to love oh, our kids yeah. and 
and be that safe place that they can come and share things with, discuss things with, and then always take them back to the Lord mm. and um, encourage in that way. That's so, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. One of the things that you said, Rachel, you thought I love, and you said, first of all, you want to be careful how you respond yes. to your kids. Yeah. Not react, reaction yeah. is the ah, yeah. but how you want to respond intentionally yeah. with love. Yeah. And that is the key is, um, you know, we may not like the actions that our children's or children are taking, but we want them to know that we always love them yes. for who they are. When God disciplines us, He disciplines our actions. He never questions who we are or how much He loves us, more what our actions yeah. are and how we have perhaps taken a wrong turn somewhere. Okay, another question for you each. And I know you had a beautiful godly mom in your life and dad both. What is, could you share maybe one lesson that you learned from your mom spiritually that has helped you in your life? You know, there are so many. I'm but, sure there's um, many. One that stands out is one I think I referred to in the last program when um, my mother would gather us all together in the morning for prayer, whoever was in the home. Um, so before I went off to school, then she would gather us for prayer and Bible reading. And, and I never enjoyed those times because I was always rushed to get things together and get out the door. I didn't want to be late for school. But she taught me by her example the importance, as Regan has brought out, the importance of beginning my day mm -hmm. with daily prayer and yeah. Bible reading. Mm -hmm. um, and it was my father who, when he was home and he led devotions, he would read a passage, then he would talk about it and would discuss the scriptures. And so he taught me by his example to think about what I was reading. So I put those two things mm -hmm. together, Beautiful. which is now what we do when you talk about the three questions, you know, mm -hmm. ask what does it say, what does it mean, what does it mean in my life? And so you're, you're reading your three verses but you're thinking about what it really means in relation to your life. Mm -hmm. And so that's, so I learned that from my mother and father. I've applied that to myself. Mm -hmm. Rachel Ruth has mm -hmm. done that and now Regan. So it's, that's going down generations. So that's one that's thing beautiful. that they passed on to me. And, yeah. and my mother, I will tell you, this was a strong woman of prayer mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. So it didn't matter what time I would go down to her bedroom at night, she would be on her knees in mm -hmm. prayer. And you, you couldn't interrupt her because she was, she spent a long time mm. on her knees in prayer every, I'm, I'm sure during the day too, but at night was when she had wow. her set aside time with the Lord wow. and just seeing that faithfulness in her mm. life. Um, so it's, I, I wanted to know Jesus like my mother like did. Your that was one of the huge mm -hmm. motivations in my life to pursue Jesus um. with all my heart because of of him, her love for him that I saw in her. That's beautiful. And I love what you said. You saw it in her. Yes. Yes, I'm sure the word she said, yes. but she uh -huh. modeled it. That's she exactly lived right. it out first. Yeah. So that's our encouragement to you, yeah. friends. Yeah. And I love that your mom actually got on her knees yeah. to pray. Uh -huh. yeah. If you don't do that, friends, get on your knees and yeah. pray. Get on your faces yeah. here at our ministry. We call it FaceTime prayer. where We literally lay on the floor before the Lord and pray and call out to him. Yeah. There's something about that humble position yes, that does something, yes. shifts something in our heart. Okay, Rachel Ruth, how about you? What is something you've learned from your mom? Um, so, just for you on yeah. your day. One thing, right? I, I know, know there's so many. There really are so many, but um, I think one thing that I usually choose is that she is so wise. So she just has so much wisdom. And I know that comes from her Bible reading mm -hmm. and time with the Lord. And so she... Uh, Anytime I come with her to her with questions, you know, or something, I call her every morning and I talk to her about stuff. She always has a wise answer, a wise thought or something mm -hmm. from scripture that she shares with me. And, and that is something that I've wanted in my life. I want, I just beg the Lord for wisdom. And she said that since she was little, she has prayed every day for God to give her wisdom, mm -hmm. that God would give her wisdom. And he has answered that. And yeah, he tells us all we have to do is ask him for wisdom and he'll give it to us. And he doesn't run out of that. You know, we don't run out. Okay, that's your limit tonight. Uh, he will give us wisdom. And so I pray the same thing for myself, that I would have that wisdom and discernment so that when my kids come to me with questions or somebody in my Bible study asks me a question, mm -hmm. that that God would give me the wisdom to know how to answer, um, especially with all the stuff going on in our world today. I, I feel very desperate to have that kind of wisdom. And it comes from time in the word and Amen. time talking to the Lord on your knees. And, and um, so I think that, and one other little thing I have to add is my mom's confidence in who the Lord is. Mm -hmm. So she has never been like, you know, nervous <laughs> or shy about yeah. talking about the Lord. She's bold. She's confident in, in her love for the Lord and, standing on God's word and speaking up um, to other people. And I know it's hard in Iran, but um, but I love her confidence. And mm, so beautiful. confidence in who God is, that he, he will carry you through those difficult things. 
And so she's really modeled that for me. And I pray I can do the same. Mm -hmm. And I know you have. And that's beautiful. And I love what, I know our time is getting close here, Mm -hmm. but I love what you said there, Rachel Ruth, that not only do you pray for your children, that you'll have the wisdom that your mom passed on to you, but that is a great thing to pray for ourselves, that we will gain wisdom, not from the world, but from God's word. So pray that for yourselves as you're seeking to model to your children and teach and train your children and pass on that baton of faith. Pray that God will give you wisdom from his word that you can pass on. Okay, so now quickly, we can't miss you. We're going to have to know what is something that you've learned from your mom and your grandmother that has influenced your life, in addition to those questions that you ask when you read your Bible. Yeah, so actually, it's a lot like yours, but I really think one of the biggest influences that I've had from my mom was coming down and seeing her in her Bible praying and just even that look that you get I feel like when you're just really studying your Bible and I just sit there sometimes and just admire it I mean it's like the the example that I that I get from you and and so that's what's really influenced me to be in my Bible because it's like I want to have what she has you know even as a little kid I would be like I really want that I want that that love that my mom has for the Lord you know and and the Lord loves that you know and so he blesses that and so I just um I just that's definitely one of the main things mm-hmm. that she's taught me. Even so even down to the um, books I would read read as a kid, the arch <laughs> books, you know. Um, there there are a bunch of these little books that um are picture kind of picture books of Bible stories, and I loved reading them. I mean, it was just so fun, and I really think that's how I learned so many Bible mm-hmm. stories, and that was such a key part, you know, and just getting me interested in the Bible, you know, mm. and that's what's made my relationship so strong with the Lord now. That's beautiful. Again, I think that the, the common thread we see here, the beautiful golden thread, is the modeling part, yeah. watching yeah. those that you love. Um, in their walk with Jesus. Well, I can't believe our time is over already. There's so many more things we could talk about. We'll have to do this again next season, have you all back. But I would love to spend some time, short time praying. Um, And if you could close us in prayer, praying for moms and grandmas, and and, and then Rachel Ruth, if you could pray for the salvation of our friends, and then I'll close us. Thank you. So Lord Jesus, we come to you and thank you that we can come and that there are no barriers, Mm -hmm. no barriers of language, culture, nationality, distance. So um, we just ask, uh, dear Holy Spirit, that you would move in the hearts and lives of those who've been watching and Mm -hmm. listening, and that uh, they would hear you speaking to them, that as we've shared testimony to your reality, to mm-hmm. your faithfulness, Lord, you're faithful to all generations, That's and right, yes, Lord. you are, and we can bear witness to your faithfulness, your grace, your goodness, and that I pray that um, those who are watching and listening would reach out to you mm-hmm. and, yes, um, and draw you into their hearts first, and then, Lord, as they fall in love with you and grow in their relationship with you, that their children and their grandchildren would see that and they would want the same thing. You are the the rock on which we stand in this crazy world that's Mm -hmm. falling apart Mm -hmm. in so much turmoil, so much danger. You're our refuge. You're our hiding place. Mm -hmm. So we come to you. We acknowledge our love for you. We worship you as uh, the God of the universe who left your throne and Mm -hmm. came down to become our Savior. And you've risen from the dead, seated on the throne again one day to come back to reign and rule in this world. And we just want to acknowledge that we love you. We pledge Mm -hmm. to you our loyalty Mm -hmm. and we thank you for families, Lord. You've put lonely Mm -hmm. people in families. Mm -hmm. And so we ask that you increase the the family members of those who are listening so that they would um, place their faith in you, that from generation to generation, we would call you blessed. Mm -hmm. So we, we thank you for this time together. In Jesus' name. And so for those watching who have never placed their faith in Jesus, you're listening and your heart's beating and you know that's what you want, but you don't know how. And so today, would you pray this prayer Mm -hmm. after me? Would you just say, dear Jesus, Mm -hmm. I know that I'm a sinner. Mm -hmm. I know I've done wrong things. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins. Mm -hmm. I know that you died on the cross Mm -hmm. and I believe that you did that to forgive me Mm -hmm. of my sins. Mm -hmm. And I am asking you to cleanse me, Mm -hmm. forgive me, Mm -hmm. come into my life, Mm -hmm. make me a new creation. Mm -hmm. And I want to serve you with my whole heart Mm -hmm. and my whole life. Mm -hmm. And I thank you for giving me heaven when I die. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And we ask this in Jesus' mighty and holy name. Mm. Amen. 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 Mm. And thank you, Rachel Ruth. Thank you, Rick. And thank you, all thank of you, you, for being here with us today. It's been a delight. Oh, Friends, thank you for joining us. I leave you with a blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Thank you for joining us here today. We'll see you next time. Bye now.